One of the modern and very recent threats to water, um, many forms of energy extraction are threats to water. The most recent is um, natural gas refracturing or fracking, where they use a tremendous amount of water and sand laced with heavy chemicals, toxins, and they steam blast it into the rock formation so hard that it's like a bullet hitting uh, a windshield. And that really that severs the rock and releases the hydrogen, or the uh, uh, the, the the gas, the natural gas. And um, the concern that we have is threefold around water. One is that it produces a methane gas that gets into local water systems and destroys them. The second is that it uses a tremendous amount of water in the first place, so it it, it you know it, it sucks up uh, water sources. And the third is that it leaves uh, polluted water behind because, of course, what's left behind is this chemical laced toxic brew, much like the toxic mix of the tar sands in northern Alberta, where we have great big tailing ponds that are so poisoned that uh, they look like water, but if the birds land on them, they die. Um, so in order to get at natural gas, which people say is a friendly or better fossil fuel than oil, um, we're destroying water. And we should not set up this dichotomy of air versus water. It's a mistake. We should have a full moratorium. Uh, in North America on uh, gas fracturing. I think a lot of people are, are really beginning to see what's happening with their local water systems and they're worried about it, but they also don't know what to do and they, they think, well, I'm not an expert, I'm not an environmentalist, I'm not a scientist, I'm, you know, I, what can I do? And I, I use the term, you have the right to care just because you live there. And, and, and I take it a step further, you have the responsibility to care because that's your water system and if you don't stand up for it, if you don't work to protect your local water system, who's going to? And I, I, So I think we need to empower people to really see their, their right and their responsibility to, to say, if I'm not, if I, listen, governments aren't doing it. If they, you know, which is not to let them off the hook. But who's going to look after this water system if it, if it isn't me? And the resistance that we're seeing with people around the world to the theft of their water from corporations or the privatization of their water services or whatever, it's amazing. And people can do amazing things when they come together and say, I, you know, you shall not pass. Like out of, you know, Lord of the Rings, you will not pass here. This, is, this belongs to us. Belongs to my kids. Belongs to their kids. It belongs to the ecosystem. And you're just not coming in here to take it. But I just repeat Martin Luther King's wonderful statement. Legislation may not change the heart, but it will restrain the heartless. We, you know, we've been put here at a unique time in the history of our planet. And we, you, you, nothing else you ever want to do is going to happen if you, if you can't breathe the air and drink the water. I mean, we ha have to do something now. It's, I think to just to live here at this planet at this time calls us um, to a particular kind of action. And I